Welcome to the Geek Home World. I am your host, Savage Tech Man. We talk sci fi, TV, movies, superheroes, and all from a geek perspective. You can find us on Blogger, Google, Twitter, Facebook, we're everywhere. Join the Geek Home World. Welcome to another episode of the Geek Home World Podcast. This is Savage Techman, a.k.a. Ed, along with Cheryl. Hello. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> and cue the music. Wah, 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 wah. What is that supposed to be? That's my bad interpretation of X-Files. That's your music. X... That's really... That's why they canceled the series. Because they hired you to do the music. Wow. Yeah, so here, because uh, there's you you kids out there, that includes everybody under the age of 80, um, <laughs> who don't remember the X-Files. Well, but before we before we talk about X-Files, though, I do want to mention, yes. uh, because we had mentioned previously about The Revenant, the Leonardo DiCaprio film, Yes. Um, which has received the record number of Oscar nominations for yes. this year. Um, we did go see it. Oscar himself liked it. <laughs> or, well, we don't know yet if it's actually going to win any Oscars. Yeah, but, but um, Leonardo got DiCaprio got the best actor, and they got best picture and all that at the Golden Blue. Well, and I didn't look to see what all the nominations are, but I'm sure cinematography's in there and all of that stuff. It's yes. uh, incredibly well it was shot. A good movie. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a great movie, but for me, it's just a little too graphic. And also at the I same time, which is enough. Uh, really, and a little too artsy for me too. Yeah, it's, I'm like, I don't. Okay, uh, whatever. But you know, it's uh, another unbelievable. And also story. a little too long. It's based on a true story. Well, it's based on a true story, but I mean, there's uh, there have been over the almost two centuries since the real story happened. It was greatly. Exactly. Mythologized, even you know, while the man was still alive. So, but it's a good film. You know, you should definitely go see it. But uh, I, I closed my eyes several times. And one, one thing, well, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. But I can tell you one thing about the film: hmm. the truth is out there. <laughs> Whoa. Oh no! Please stop. That sounds like some weird Star Trek meets. What's the Jeopardy theme? <laughs> yeah, it does. You really? I was watching. You, you don't have. I don't know the comedian guy. I should know his name, but he's kind of British sounding. You know, speaks proper English. And, and he had a, like you. a Medea guy on there. Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry and Julian Anderson on a show the other night. And they, and they were just talking about stuff. Said so said say something happy, and then I'll play the X Files theme after it. <laughs> it all it sounds, sounds creepy. Creepy. <laughs> so it was like, I had eggs for breakfast. <laughs> That's please stop doing that. You really are not doing that well. I'm not doing it well. When you listen back to this, you'll see how poorly you did that. <laughs> and editing won't help. No, there's. But for no any of you under the that. age of eighty who don't know who X Files is, uh, or was, or is, because it is again, it always was. It still is. The TV series... I think ran- they're going to add you to the X-Files. They <laughs> clearly need to investigate I have you. an odd one. You so. are. But the X-Files ran from 1993 to 2002. Can you remember back that far, people? Really? <laughs> well, actually, one of the cool things about this reprisal is that, supposedly, they're doing it in such a way that it will be appealing to the people who are true fans of the original, who know it by heart, as well as to... Younger people or others who may not have seen it's the series. It's kind of like, it's going to have like a six episode run. Kinda yeah, like just a mini series. It's like a mini series. And basically, the premise of the show, you have Agent Dana Scully. She's an FBI agent and she's sent in to uh, debunk the X Files, which is a bunch of paranormal cases that Agent Fox Mulder played by David Duchovny, <laughs> is running, and he believes the truth is out there, the well, famous but, and poster. It, well, and the truth for him was mainly about this kind of alien conspiracy, and, which I read somewhere uh, recently someone said, for those of you who don't know, back in the 90s, alien conspiracies were kind of like zombies today. Yeah. They were everywhere. And the thing is, I was thinking about this now, 
alien conspiracies are kind of mainstream. With, they are very mainstream. You know, and X-Files helped to make that. shows on the History Channel, Channel and all of that. And like, uh, the pyramid idiots have taken over. <laughs> but well, now, this is set sort but of... But it also deals with, like, paranormal and... They have Monster of the Week episodes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, such. it's only like like what thirty percent of the shows related to the overarching alien theme with the abduction of. Yeah, and uh, some people didn't like the series sister. when it got in later episodes, uh, later seasons when it really focused on that a lot. That's actually when I found it more interesting. The myself. alien conspiracy. Oh yeah, totally. They had me believing. Well, I mean, and apparently, like the conspiracy ideas are still like even more going to be more elaborate because now we're in this sort of post 9-11 world and so you have everything's a more everybody believes in conspiracies now back in the 90s you were like crazy if you believed in conspiracies but now every other day you hear about another new conspiracy and we have things like the truth um, is out there what's the name of the guy who was the nsa leaker edmund edwin what's his face snowden, snowden. Um, you know, it's like, oh, maybe Mulder's really onto it. There really Thanks. is. Now we just got tagged by the NSA. <laughs> oh, now we just got tagged again. Um, I feel so. like I'm being tagged. <laughs> yeah, I know. Anyway, we're going to see the X-Files uh, at 7 p.m. after the NFC Championship game ends. And for all of you geeks out there who don't know what the NFC is, don't worry about it. It's football. What, NFC? <laughs> That's NFL. Oh, well, whatever. National... Well. Football conference on January twenty fourth. January twenty fourth. That's not the uh, the Super Bowl. No, I guess it's pre Super Bowl. Anyway. But well, and elsewhere internationally. But it's five, well the second so it's going to premiere on Sunday and then the second episode's the next night on Monday. Right in its regular time slot at eight p.m. Monday, January twenty fifth. And internationally, Fox is going to be airing it on its international stations. Fox Mulder. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. No, they're going to be airing it on their international stations the next day. So um, check your local schedules to see when it might be showing in your neighborhood. Yeah, now I loved X Files in the nineties. I and Robert Patrick, uh, who brilliantly played the Terminator in the best Terminator movie, Terminator Two. He was he's not going to be returning as John Doggett. He later came on in the series later. Uh, in later seasons, and I was hoping everybody would. Hey, I'm cool come as back. long as the Smoky Man's there. He, I mean, Smoky he's, Man will be there. Smoky Man's going to be there. And, uh, we're um, going to have the kind of Monster of the Week episodes, like I said, and then we'll have some of the mythology, the UFO abduction, stuff like that. Well, the Chris stuff. Carter, yeah. the, the original um, creator, yes. he wrote and directed episode one of the series and episode six so it's kind of like i think one and six are going to be definitely in that arc and then two through five are written and directed by different people although it's interesting that each one is written and directed by the same person so episode two is written directed by one person episode three is written directed by somebody else um and those will be the sort of monster of the week uh stories and they actually showed the first episode at comic-con last mm-hmm. fall and the fans loved it so that's a good sign that's always good when your fan base loves it but then the critics afterwards were like eh not so much I don't know I, I'm, I'm trying to keep my excitement level down but I've been looking it's one of the shows I'm looking forward to this year definitely um, X-Files as long as it's you know the second movie wasn't so great and that I guess turned people because there was terrible. supposed to be a third movie too well, the third movie is actually written Chris Carter has written the third movie and he says he's going to do the X-Files the six episode run here on television and then he's going he's waiting for Fox to come to him and say hey I want more then he'll have more of the series and if they want a movie if they want more in the form of a movie then we'll get an on-screen movie But the big problem with doing the series now and doing the movie versus way back when is that David Duchovny and Skelly... Julian Anderson. (laughs) Thank you. ...are big stars now, and they both have their own careers going where they they weren't as active before. You know, X-Files pretty much made both of them. And... The Although, fact I mean, I don't think they've done anything as big as X-Files, right. though. I mean, they've, they've, it's they've, not like Harrison Ford did a little film called Star Wars and then didn't do anything after that, you know? <laughs> yeah, he did that art film, Star Wars, and he won that, that even smaller art film, uh, Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones series. Indiana Jones, right. And uh, among other things, like, get off my plane, <laughs> Air Force One. Great movie. 
Uh, but anyway, so it's going to be hard getting their schedules together to get a full commitment to whether they're going to do a series or continue the series. So we'll see. I totally hope that we get a longer series, another season, and I hope we get a movie. I want it all. That's just me. I have some spoilers, but I'm certainly not going to... No, you're the king of spoilers, and you're not going to spoil I'm anything. I'm looking at my spoilers right here on my tablet here, and I'm not going to give away spoilers. No. So. Well, like you said, I mean, I think the best news about this is if, that it's good, and by good I mean it makes money for the people at Fox, uh, then they'll almost certainly do some more uh, television shows, at least. I definitely want more shows, more seasons, so... I'm in for the the long haul on X Files. Actually, I think it's going to be more like short hauls with mini series because, <laughs> the, like you said, David totally Duchovny. Works. Well, I don't think it's just because they're too busy. I think it's because David Duchovny thinks he's too old and he doesn't want to work that hard. <laughs> well, they they're not going to be able to do twenty uh, episode seasons. But you know that's cool with me because I'm really kind of getting used to these short seasons or shows that have two short seasons in one year. It's a lot easier to digest. So many people will binge watch it anyway that six shows is a lot easier to watch in one day than six seasons. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, no. The truth is out there. Whoa. No, stop with the music! Oh. <laughs> I want to believe. <laughs> Geek Home World in memoriam. Gone, but not forgotten. Well, 2016 just seems to be very heartless. It's uh, between cancer and Death Eaters. It's taking <laughs> a lot of celebrities that I really like. So stop at 2016. <laughs> <laughs> it seems that um, we've lost just too many of these celebrities and most were in their 60s only in their 60s yeah i mean nearly every day we've heard about another big death i mean starting on new year's day with natalie cole mm -hmm. and then uh ziggy stardust himself uh, david bowie and yeah. dan haggerty big loss better known as grizzly adams and uh, Pat Harrington from the 1970s show One Day at a Time, which was one of my faves. David Margulies, who I think was the mayor in the original yes, Ghostbusters. he was. So I uh, don't know if he's making an appearance in the new film that's coming out. But then, but then, like, the strangest thing was uh, Celine Dion's husband, Rene Angelil, who died. And then two days later, her brother, brother yeah. uh, David Dion, died. So... Like, she lost two people within two days, both, to cancer. It's just crazy. unbelievable. So we got to fight cancer in the dark side. And our neighbor, too. And our neighbor. Yeah, it's been a bad year already. Yeah. Yeah, we Hopefully lost, stop. We lost a good neighbor. Stop. Of course, the greatest loss to the geek home world has probably been Alan Rickman. The villain of all villains. Well, I don't know. Darth Vader's probably the villain of all villains. <laughs> but, uh, but Darth Vader's been pay played by a couple of people. So. Yes. Um, and he, this actor, he actually didn't want to play the role of villain so much, but he was so good at it. Um, I heard one of his friends on a talk show who told a story about Alan Rickman, and you know he just really wanted to be remembered differently than as a villain. And a child came up to him at a party, and he said, yeah. uh, "He said, Mr. Rickman, why do you always play such villains?" <laughs> and uh, he said back to him, "I don't play villains. I play very interesting people. <laughs> interesting people." <laughs> and then, and then that little kid said, "May I have some more?" Please? No, that's a different show. That's, that's a, a different, different show. Okay. I don't think. I don't We're think he was ever an Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're talking about Severus Snape here. <laughs> so, Rickman had an extremely varied career from Shakespearean films, very much like Jean-Luc Picard, <laughs> uh, Patrick Stewart, and to even action films, to comedies, to really whatever kind of movie Tim Burton makes. <laughs> uh, but let's focus on the Rickman films that are most beloved by geeks. Um Rickman was really the first to be known to audiences outside of Britain by playing the German bad guy Hans Gruber. Hans Gruber. Hans Gruber in Die Hard, starring Bruce Willis. One of the best Christmas movies ever. Yes, Christmas movie. Christmas movie. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, it was Christmas. And 
I always remember when Die Hard 2 came out. Christmas again. It was Christmas again. And Bruce Willis is like, what does this always happen to me? And I screamed at the film, because they keep giving you a check. <laughs> but, uh, well, I thought, you know, that was, of course, definitely the first time I ever saw him. And I thought he was brilliant. He's a great actor. You know, he, really. He what, commands well, the roles a great he role, plays. A great role to start yes. with. And he did it very well. And um, as usual, he had great lines. And so, for instance, after murdering... The CEO that he's holding hostage, uh, he says, Mr. Tagagi will not be joining us for the rest of his life. <laughs> or uh, later on, he asks Bruce Willis who he is by taunting him. He says, who are you? Just another American who saw too many movies as a child? Another orphan of a bankrupt culture who thinks he's John Wayne or Rambo or Marshall Dillon? <laughs> I'm going to count the three. There will not be a four. Oh, like with Mr. Tagagi. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, but another of his great films, uh, an, a sort of, I guess, action film, he played the Sheriff Nottingham in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Wait a minute. Everything I do. Oh, I no, do please, no. You. Stop singing. <laughs> Although I guess that stops you from singing uh, so much Adele around the house. If you Hello from the start dark singing side. Brian Adams songs instead. <laughs> well, you know, in that film, Kevin Costner gives his usual kind of wooden, uh, even toned, unemotional performance. Kevin Costner is Kevin Costner in every Kevin every, Costner every movie. Every film, exactly. If uh, you pay him, he will act. <laughs> yes. But he's got the role of Robin. He's good actor. Morgan Freeman is great as Azim, the, the Moorish uh, hero. And then Rickman, again, brilliant as the evil sheriff. The one thing you can't count on is the accent of Kevin Costner and Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. It's very non He's like very middle American. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Uh, Rickman in there in that Robin Hood movie. <laughs> he threatens to. I keep thinking of Robin Hood Men in Tights. No, that's that's, throwing me that's off. the spoof. <laughs> that's the spoof. He's not in the spoof. <laughs> He's in another spoof yes. we'll talk about later. But <laughs> Rickman, basically, he threatens to cut out Robin Hood's heart with a spoon. Why? Because it's dull, you twit. It'll hurt more. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically explains, I had a very sad childhood. I never knew my parents. It's amazing, I'm saying. Yes, he's so very sane. And one of my favorite scenes, although I guess it's terrible that this is a favorite scene, but um, after he's got Maid Mary and he's, he's uh, got her locked up in the room, he's trying to rape her and... Robin Hood and Azim are beating on the door, and he and he screams, "I can't do this with all that racket!" <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, in 1999, Rickman portrayed a frustrated actor in Galaxy Quest, the parody of it Star was, Trek. Yeah, yeah, alongside Tim Allen and Sigourney Weaver, <laughs> <laughs> which is hilarious. I love that movie. That that might be one of my favorite Alan Rickman movies. Um, it's definitely his, one of my favorite uh, Tim Allen movies. Yeah. <laughs> Although Santa Claus is yeah. good, but... <laughs> <laughs> his character, Alexander, hates the fact that his career has just become like a string of appearances at fan conventions, and he's so forced to dress in an alien garb and mindlessly repeat the, his catchphrase, by Grey Barb's hammer. Grabthar. Grabthar. <laughs> well, you see, he said it so many times he forgot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Blade, by, <laughs> I can't even say it now. By Grabthar's hammer, hammer, by the sons, sons of, of Warven, you shall be avenged. avenged. And it keeps coming up over and over again through the whole film. And you're like, but, don't, he's like, don't say it to me again. Don't say it to me. He's like, <laughs> Stop. I just want to do it in monotone. <laughs> <laughs> well, and he's this uh, Shakespearean actor, and yes. he's um, he's actually Sir Alexander Dane. He's been knighted. And in one scene, he complains, he's like, I played Richard III. And there were five curtain calls. <laughs> I was an actor once, damn it. Now look at me. I won't go out there and say that stupid line again. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> but uh, that never happens in theater. No. <laughs> uh, uh, of course, later, he realizes the true impact of his character has had, and intentionally and sincerely, he says the line. Because the the alien who's idolized him has died, so he's actually going to avenge him i guess and yeah. it's just a really great film and although the creators who were all star trek fans were really concerned that about how the film was going to be received by the fans 
fans loved it. I mean, we loved it. And yeah. and one of the coolest things is that at a convention back in 2013, yes. they actually rated Galaxy Quest <laughs> as the seventh best Star Trek film. So it got into the list of Star Trek films. Although uh, William Shatner said he didn't really recognize the character Tim Allen was playing. As, uh, <laughs> he's like, I didn't know who that was. <laughs> Although George Takei said he really had the swagger down as uh, as Shatner. <laughs> well, there were sequel rumors recently about Galaxy Quest, but they can't do it without Rickman, and I hope they don't. No, and I agree. Well, in fact, though, just a few months ago, they announced that they were going to be moving towards a television series, and so Amazon is actually uh, working on producing that. So I'm thinking that's the direction they're going to go instead of instead of a movie and and i think that's right i don't think you could do galaxy quest without alan rickman there well his greatest contribution alan rickman to geek culture i'd have to say is professor severus snape in the harry potter franchise he's kind of like the anti-hero of the series and the sub subtleties of his performance of his story arc that were there from the beginning, J.K. Rowling, she had planned the whole thing through all the books. Really brilliant. Yeah, and I couldn't write all those books first off, and then I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't keep that you secret safe. Who the characters were. <laughs> yeah, I would be like this Severus guy. Watch him. Watch it. He's <laughs> well, important. she did actually say keep an eye on Snape. Yeah, yeah. Which which people took a, a different that he was going to be right. eviler. But um, it just really showed off Rickman's talents and. Well, to do it through all those films, and you know, as a regular, I seven of them, I believe it was seven. Yeah. I thought there were eight. Yeah, because well, there were six books, seven films. I There's like know. one more film than there are books. I don't know because yeah. you know, as you all who listen regularly know, I've never managed to get into the Harry Potter series. Although I did see one of the films, I've seen bits here and there, but I'm really a huge Alan Rickman fan, and so I kind of feel like I have to watch them now. You in have his, to in his memory. You should watch them at least once. Yeah, so I'm going to do that because I, I do believe that among all of his roles, and you know, of course we've just talked about the, the geek-friendly ones, but he's done other things, uh, Sense and Sensibility, and a lot of other uh, British films too, but uh, I think that Snape is going to be the character for which he's best remembered, and that's you know compelling enough for me to go back and try to try to watch him. Well, you know, most actors that die in the prominent life like uh, Rickman did, you know, you always want more from them. And um, has a, we have a couple performances waiting for release from Rickman. Mm-hmm. So kind of like Robin Williams, you know, he had a couple films in the bag. Thank, thank the good Lord. So um, he will reprise his role as Tim Burton's Caterpillar in the Wonderland sequel, Alice Through the Looking Glass, which mm-hmm. will be pretty big, hopefully. And it's scheduled for release at the end of May, so we'll hear from him again. Right. No, about, well, seven weeks or so at the beginning of April, we're going to get to see him in the British thriller Eye in the Sky, which is about drone, drone warfare. warfare. So that seems pretty uh, pretty much right up our alley. And he stars uh, against uh, or opposite Helen Mirren. Yeah, so, so great cast. Yeah. Very good cast. I'm definitely looking forward to that. Most definitely. And uh, as we say our farewells to Alan Rickman, though, I I would like to suggest one more tribute that we could do. Really? I don't want a tribute to me right now. No, you're not Alan Rickman. Uh, Okay. (laughs) So what I'm thinking is that we need to find an illustrator. So if there are any illustrators out there listening, so we can produce Alan Rickman-inspired greeting cards in time for Christmas. (laughs) I'm I'm all for it. Like in Die Hard, where he tells the safe cracker, that Christmas is the time of miracles, so be of good cheer. <laughs> or even better, uh, in the share as the sheriff of Nottingham when he orders the punishment of the people because they love Robin Hood more than they love him, and he says, "Cancel the kitchen scraps for the lepers and end all the merciful <laughs> beheadings and call off Christmas." <laughs> so rest in peace, Alan Rickman. By Grandfather's hammer, you shall be avenged. <laughs> Thanks for listening to another episode of the Geek Homeworld Podcast with your host, Savage Tech Man. You can find us on Libsyn, Google+, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, listen to us on iTunes, see us on YouTube, be part of our Mixler chats. 
Thank you. See you again on the Geek Home World Podcast. Oh, wow.